All right, so I'm at the front of a place called Mets Performance Consulting. They do VO2 max testing. I've never done a VO2 max test before. I've always been intrigued, but I'm actually a bit of a layman. I know VO2 max is the body's ability to deliver a certain amount of oxygen to the working muscles and testing that VO2 max enables you to determine, I guess, what sort of fitness level you're at. What I thought I'd do is bring you along to my VO2 max test. Now, before I get going, I've got a little drop of peppermint that I put under my tongue before I do any physical activity. So, first of all, we'll go into what the VO2 max is. Okay. So, definition of VO2 max is that it's a total amount of oxygen that we can breathe in by the lungs, transport by the heart and cardiovascular system, and then use by the muscles to create aerobic energy. Right? So, it's, it's, a, it's the efficiency of your heart, lungs, and muscles working together to basically turn oxygen into usable energy so that we can ride, swim, run, row for a long time. So, as exercise intensity increases and we need our energy demand is higher, that's when we start to use anaerobic energy. The only difference between the two is that that one uses oxygen and the other one doesn't. The reason anaerobic energy doesn't use oxygen is we don't have time to. Intensity is too high, okay? Yeah. Downside to anaerobic energy, we produce lactic acid. Lactic acid is a burning sensation you feel, feel in your legs. Build up a lactic acid is gonna basically shut off the muscle um, and reduce our force output. So, so VO2 max test, it's a, it's a lab-based test. It's the gold standard in exercise tests to determine your oxygen carrying capability. Um, so the the alternative to a, to a uh, a lab-based test is a field-based test, so it could be a step test, right? So the reason that a lab-based test is so so good is because we directly measure all the components. We'll go over and have a look at the, the stuff in a sec. But what a what a VO2 max test? It's a graded step test, so it's uh, we, we we tailor it depending on on the individual and how what we think their rough FTP is. So basically for an FTP of about 320, we're gonna start you at 120 watts. We're gonna increase the resistance by 20 watts every minute. And it's a maximal test. You just keep going until you feel like you can't go any longer. The idea is that you put yourself right to your max. So we should get your max heart rate. We should get your peak oxygen consumption. Um, and we get a lot of other variables as well, which we can speak about in the data. It's a good question. It's a question I get a lot. Um, we get a lot of information from it. It's not just your VO2 max. And a lot of people even come to me and say, look, I don't really care about my VO2 max. I'm more about my, I'm, I'm more interested in my lactate threshold um, or my zone two heart rate, whatever it is. We get all that as well. All right, so VO2 max is one measurement we get, but we also get, we get a deep physiological insight into your body and how it responds to exercise. So rather than using training zones such as 220 minus your age to figure out your max heart rate and, and figure out a, a basic equation to figure out what your zone two equation should be, we'll just directly measure it and tell you exactly um, what it should be. A quick example I'll use is a 49 year old male that we had came in and he said he always has a really high heart rate. So in theory, 220 minus your age, his heart rate should only be about uh, 100 and 71 and he maxed out at 217 beats and had a threshold heart rate of 196 okay so all the stuff he read from generic equations was saying that he should only be holding you know, a heart rate of like 140 for his for his long easy ride and, and a threshold of about 160 okay turns out that that was about 40 beats out which is obviously significant for this person so what i could tell him i said look don't stress that your heart rate gets into the 190s that's your threshold that's good when you do your aerobic base rides you can actually hold 175 beats all right, which is for most people is very high for, to be aerobic. So he actually got instant benefit because instead of trying to hold 130 where he wasn't getting a good training stimulus, so hey, no, actually for you, you should be holding 175. He got a better training stimulus, got more bang for his buck out of his training, improved his performance that way. What bike here, Ergo. So similar to your, your smart trainers, your tax, your, your uh, kickers, basically you can hold a cadence of anywhere from 50 to 130 RPM and uh, the bike will change the resistance for you. So I set all the wattage through this machine. They connect up to each other. Um, I'll put the load in there in watts. Um, that'll correlate into the bike here. And essentially what you'll be hooked up to is you've got a mask here, which will cover your face and nose, a flow meter, which is connected to the machine. That's what's gonna be directly measuring all your oxygen consumption, all the air you're breathing as well. You'll have a heart rate monitor on too. Yeah, 12 to 15. So we, for a VO2 max test alone, we try to like make it last about 12 minutes. Good enough time to get yourself warmed up so that you can reach your, your max heart rate, but not so long that you start to get external factors of fatigue, such as heat load, stress, dehydration, all that sort of stuff. I actually find it's easier than doing like a 20 minute FTP test because it's a gradual ramp. So you, you gradually get up to a hard intensity and then you only last about three minutes beyond threshold. All right, so you're working really hard for probably four or five out of that 12 minutes and that's sort of it. Yeah. All right, so you go to your max, the end is like painful, absolutely, it hurts, but it's only for a couple of minutes. It's not like you have to hold huge power for 20 minutes.
So I've just finished my test. I'm still absolutely dripping, uh, but Luke is gonna walk me through um, what just happened. So Luke, can I knock on the door of um, BMC now or the yeah. deal? <laughs> Tell you what, mate, your, uh, your data is a lot better than maybe you would've thought it would be uh, at this stage. So yeah, I mean, your VO2 max is really, really good. Uh, um, maybe if we have a look at that now. Yeah. Um, we've got a relative VO2 max here of 84.8, which is like, really good. So to put that into comparison, I'll go into what VO2 max is again in yeah. a sec, but to put that in comparison, like, you know, um, you know, Lance Armstrong was sitting around 86, Froome is 89, um, Cadell is in the getting into the 90s. So right. as an overall aerobic engine, um, doing really, really well. Okay. okay. So again, what, is, what your VO2 max is, is the total amount of oxygen we can take in, transport and utilise in a minute. Okay, so we have to breathe it in first, we have to have a little lung capacity to actually breathe it in. Yep. Then we have to be able to circulate it by our heart, have an efficient cardiovascular system. And then most importantly, where a lot of people lack, is being able to actually extract it from the bloodstream into the muscles and use it for energy. Right. Okay. So that's that number there. Now that's power to weight ratio. So there's two types of VO2 max. Mil, as you see here, we've got mils per kilo per minute. All right. So it's total amount of oxygen in mils yep. divided by kilograms per minute. Now we weighed in at 79.8. Yep. So that's where we get this absolute VO2 max, all right? Okay. This is just mils per minute, takes yep. out the weight component. Okay. Now the difference between the two, your relative VO2 max, yep. this is a better indicator for your weight bearing sports, okay. all right? So it's power to weight. So you're looking at things like your uphill cycling, you've got to overcome yep. the overcome your body weight and yep. carry yourself up the hill. You're looking at things like running as well. Okay. Obviously you've got to overcome your body weight every yep. step. Your absolute VO2 max, is more to do with um, things where power is more important. So it's more your time trial, flat time trial cycling, as yep. opposed to your hill cycling. So as a VO2 max um, summary, well, you can see here, this is, this is, a, this is a, a general population scale. Yep. Most people are similar age, height, weight, gender to yourself from very poor to superior. Anything over 52.5 is considered superior for general pop. Okay. Now, athlete population, it obviously depends on what you're looking at, but I always say 60 is a really good baseline. Yep. 70 is good. I got like, great. Yep. Five percent tops getting above eighty. Okay, so okay. it's actually really good. Yeah. yeah. So VO two max wise, VO two max test is, is used as a talent ID, particularly for younger athletes, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you came in, uh, probably a bit old now, mate. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> if you came in, that, yeah. if you came in as a 15, 16, even eighteen year old yeah. kid and got eighty close to 85 yeah. VO2, you, you'd be knocking on the door, yeah. for sure. Yeah, okay. yeah. A lot of people can't get that high purely genetically, yeah. right? So it's half genetics, half training, right? yeah. As a summary of your data, aerobic power is really good. As we said, we've got a nice flat line at the top here. So you're remaining quite efficient at a high intensity and that's why your VO2 max is so high. It's in the elite in the elite category. Now, as I said, it's not all good because we want this, this, this line overall to go from 16% close to 15% if we can. So then you are able to use oxygen more efficiently at a lower intensity, which is gonna be applicable for your longer distance races, yep. okay? The other thing we wanna look at is threshold, right? So and this, is, this is the one that's uh, more applicable for anything that's sort of 45 to an hour or longer. Although you've got a massive, you've got an elite VO2 max, right? elite VO2 max, you can only hold 72% of that VO2 max at threshold. So as I said before, you can be a V2, V4, V6, V8 engine, and then, which is your VO2 max, yep. and then your threshold is how many cylinders that 
that engine can actually work on for a long time. It's so a what, functional so what component. what would the pros do? So the pros will be able to hold closer to 90 to 94 percent of their VO2 max at threshold, right? So you have a very similar VO2 max, which is good, but now we need to, they're, they're a V8 working on seven and a half cylinders, you're a V8 working on six, we need to get you up to a seven and a half cylinders, if that makes sense, all right? So the um, type of training that we're gonna do is, is basically at and above threshold. We wanna get your body flooded full of lactic acid, give you a little bit of recovery, and then go again. So lactic acid in, partially recovered, in, partially recovered, get your body better at, at buffering, tolerating that lactic acid, so you can put up with more of it, so you can withstand a higher VO2 max at so thresholds. The whole idea of training is that we want to build the engine first, so your, your total VO2 max, so go from say 60 mils to 80 mils, and then push that threshold percentage right up to the max. So for example, if, if this was your engine, okay, and your threshold was at 72%, if we increase your VO2 max, we don't do any threshold training, but we increase your VO2 max, it's all going to move relative to each other. Okay, so although you haven't improved your threshold, it's still 72% of a bigger number. Therefore, you're going to have a better FTP. On the contrary, if you already have maximized your engine first and, and you're at 72%, all right, well, VO2 max can't change. Let's go into race specificity, get some really solid threshold training work. Keep VO2 max the same, but now move that 72% up to 90%, you've maximized the engine. So you can tackle it either way and you won't know which way you should tackle it until you get the deeper physiological insight into what you need to do.